Hello to all. Welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video we will study about SQL Data Sync and we will study about the setup of SQL Data Sync wherein the hub as well as the member database will be taken as SQL Database, Azure SQL Database. Okay. So first of all, we will understand briefly what is SQL Data Sync. So it is a service. So what is SQL Data Sync? It is a service built on Azure SQL Database. It lets you synchronize the data you select bi-directionally across multiple database, both on-premise and in the cloud. But in this demo, we will only take both the hub and the member database as Azure SQL Database and we will try to synchronize the data. Okay. So currently, this data sync is not supported for Azure SQL MI, that is managed instance or for Synapse Analytics. Maybe in future, this will be enabled. So from this, we know that data sync is actually synchronizing the data between multiple databases. Okay. So next comes the overview. Data sync is based around the concept of a sync group. Okay. Sync group is a group of databases that you want to synchronize. Okay. So in order to synchronize the data, data sync uses a hub and spoke topology. You define one of the databases in the sync group as the hub database. The rest of the databases are member database. Only one database will be the hub database. Okay. And it must be Azure SQL database. Member databases can either be Azure SQL database or in instances of SQL server. Okay. So this is the brief overview about what is SQL data sync and what is the concept behind the hub and the member database. So in this demo, we will have the hub as well as the member database as Azure SQL database. And if we go further down, we will know when we are going to use this SQL data sync. So first is hybrid data synchronization. With this, you can keep data synchronized between your databases in SQL Server and SQL database to enable hybrid applications. So this capability may appeal to customers who are considering moving to cloud. So if a customer is going to synchronize the data from SQL Server to Azure SQL database, it will help in hybrid data synchronization then for distributed applications in many cases it's beneficial to separate different workloads across different databases for example if we have a large production database but we want to run a reporting or analytics workload on this data it's helpful to have a second database for this additional workload okay and this minimizes the performance impact on the production workload so distributed applications third use case is globally distributed application many business span several regions so many businesses span over several regions and even several countries or regions to minimize the network latency okay it's best to have your data in a region that is close to you so this will reduce the network latency here it is mentioned as data sync is not preferred solution for the following scenarios disaster recovery read scale etl migration from sql server to sql database for these scenarios we have the recommended solutions as shown on the right side. So here we got the basic idea about SQL data sync. Now next we are going to set up the SQL data sync. So in order to set up the data sync, we have this documentation. So uh, under Azure SQL, inside the tutorials for SQL database and the move data, we have set up the SQL data sync. So in here in the documentation, SQL data sync setup is given in detail. So now we'll go to this setup tutorial for SQL data sync and we will try to create the data sync between Azure SQL databases. So the very first step is create sync group. Go to the Azure portal to find your database in SQL database, search for and select SQL databases. Okay. So in order to create a sync group, we should select the database which we want to create as the hub database. So now we are going to create a new SQL database and we'll mark it as hub database. And the hub database is a sync topology central endpoint in which a sync group has multiple database endpoints. All other member database with endpoints in the sync group sync with the hub database. So hub database is very important. So let's now go to the Azure portal and we will create hub database that is Azure SQL database. So 
let's go to the job portal and we will create the database so let's go to home and create a resource and here we'll write a raw sql data base so now we'll create a new sql database click on create so here in the basics tab we will let the subscription and resource group as is and we'll create a new database so let's now name this as data sync hub database okay server we'll create a new server for this database so let's click here create new server so data sync hub server okay location let it be default authentication method let let's select as sql authentication sql authentication server admin login has to be given so let's give it as okay sql db and the password okay then click on okay we created the server the database name is given server is created we don't want to create elastic pool workload environment we want as development compute and storage we'll try to configure the database we'll take it as serverless only so rest of the settings look fine apply backup storage redundancy we'll leave as is lrs only we'll go to the networking connectivity method this is for demo purpose, so we'll make it as public endpoint. We'll allow the services and resources to access the server. Then we'll go to the security tab. We'll enable the free trial for the defender. Rest of the settings looks fine. We'll go to the additional settings. We don't want the sample database. We'll leave it as none. Then we'll go to the tag section. Review and create, and then click on create. So the deployment is in progress. Let's wait for some time until this database is created. So the deployment is complete. Let's go to the resource. So our SQL database is created. The name is Data Sync Hub. Okay. So if we go to the documentation here, we have to select the database and then on the SQL database menu for the selected database, select sync to other databases. In the screenshot at the standard documentation, it is shown under the settings tab, sync to other databases. But if we go here to the SQL database, it comes under the data management tab, okay, sync to other databases. So just Select under the data management sync to other databases option. And this will open you this page where we have this button new sync group. If you go back here, it says on this page, we have to select the new sync group. So this new sync group will open a page as shown here. Okay. So let's click on new sync group. And this will have these details. We have to give the sync group name. Then we have to select the database. We have to create a new database or select the existing database then the other options so let's go one by one so sync group name so let's name it as data sync group fine so after giving the name the second option is sync metadata database here we have the options use existing database or new database if we go back in the standard documentation Here at the bottom, we have the setting as well as the description. So we gave the sync group name. Okay. Then sync metadata database. Choose to create a database recommended or to use an existing database. If you choose new database, create new database, then on the SQL database page, name and configure the new database and select. Okay. If you choose existing database, select the database from the list. So we will try to create a new database. If we go further down below, Microsoft 
recommends to create a new empty database for use as the sync metadata database so sync metadata database microsoft recommends to create a new one okay so we'll try to create a new one so let's click on new database and then create new database configure database settings let's click here and we'll create the new database with the database name as let's say data sync and this will be a member database so let's write it as member data sync member resource group will be the same target server will create a new server for this so create a new server let's name it as data sync member server server admin login ck sql db password okay then click on select so we have created the new server for this configure the database so we'll click on configure i will take serverless since it's for demo purpose we'll take the backup storage redundancy as lrs we'll click okay so a new database is here created automatic sync on or off so if we go back here it says if you choose on enter a number and select seconds minutes hour okay the first sync sync begins after the selected interval period elapses from the time the configuration is saved okay so we want the automatic sync to be on and we'll set the frequency let's say every 5 minutes we want it to be updated okay next is conflict resolution hub win or member win in our case we will select hub win means when conflict occurs data in the hub database will override the conflicting data in the member database okay so we'll take hub win username and password it's already there we leave it as is click okay so here you can see it is initializing a deployment submitting the deployment and now the deployment is shown as in progress so here we can see that the deployment failed so what we did is we tried to create a data sync group okay and we tried to create a new sql database let's go to see what are the details for this deployment fail if we go here on the right side you can see in the error details value is not a valid or supported tls version invalid minimal tls version so this error of invalid minimal tls version occurred because of a known bug in the azure sql database sql data sync and how we got to know this is when we go here so this is the link of the official microsoft q and a forum that is question and answer forum if we go here there is a question asked by one of the customer sebastian that sql data sync deployment was failing okay due to the minimal tls version he also tried to create the data sync group with a new sql database as we can see here it said to create a new database it is recommended by microsoft to create a new database but there is some known bug and if we go further down here here the customer has reported that he has tried to create a new database he has given the sync group details and and he has mentioned that this could be a bug related to the tls 1.2 version and to which an employee from microsoft has replied that on reproducing she also got the same error okay and they are working with the internal product team to get this solved okay so as of the date when this video is created there is a known bug in the data sync
now for your sql database and if we go further down the employee has replied that as a workaround to unblock the issue we can create the sync db beforehand that is the member database and we can use the existing database option okay as sync db so that is what we are going to do now okay so let's go back here and the sync meta database we are going to use the existing database since we do not have it we will create that existing database separately okay so let's go to the portal we'll close here and we'll go back we'll go back so this was our hub database now we'll open another page we'll go home we'll create a new resource as sql database create and in the same way we will create this as member database so let's name the database name as data sync member server we'll create a new server data sync member server location let it be as is authentication method as sql authentication then the admin login okay click here okay so name server given we don't want the elastic sql pool workload environment as development configure the database as serverless it's serverless so apply backup storage redundancy as lrs networking we want it as public endpoint we'll enable this setting as it is for demo purpose then in the security enable the free trial for microsoft defender additional settings we'll leave it as is and now we'll try to create so it is validating here and then initializing the deployment submitting and now we can see the deployment is in progress let's wait for its completion and we'll get back so the deployment is complete let's go to the resource and here new sql database data sync member is created so what we did is we created the sync so what we did is we created a hub database and we created the member database why we created member database because there is a known bug we cannot create the new database directly while creation of the sync group okay now we can create sync group and perform sql data sync so in order to perform this data synchronization we should have some data in the hub database so how we will verify that the data sync is happening because this data base is empty we have not put any data inside this database so let's add some tables in, into the hub database let's go to the query editor in the sql database of the hub database and try to log in through sql authentication okay so we logged in and this page opens up the query section so here in the query i have already created the queries for creation of the tables inserting some values into it and then query okay so there are two tables one without primary key and another table with primary key so we will execute the first table commands let's go back here and paste and perform run 
So this has created the table, inserted the values and gave us the result. Okay, so this table does not have the primary key and then we'll create another table with a new query, paste it. Similar, same case, creating table, inserting data and then querying. So run it. So the data is inserted. And if you open the table section, we can see the two tables are created. So we have now some data in the hub database. So while performing the data sync, we should see the same data to be added to the member database. And here the new member database is a fresh database which does not have any tables. So if we try to open through query editor in the member database, and if you open the tables, we are not having any tables. You can see it's empty. Okay. Now our hub database has two tables. Okay. One is having primary key, another one without primary key. Now we can create the data sync group. So we'll go to the sync to other databases option. Click OK here and create a new sync group. Click on new sync group. We'll write here data sync group and the next setting sync metadata database for which we have already explored the new database option which is having a bug we will now use existing database and the existing database we have already created as data sync member so from the top down we have to select data sync member select it we want automatic sync to be on which I already told you previously. So we'll select here and writing the frequency as five minutes. It should refresh. So we set the frequency as five minutes, conflict resolution, hub win, then the username and password, CK SQL DB. Username password given. Now we'll click on OK. So here in the notification, you can see it is creating data sync group. So here it is creating the data sync group. And now the notification says data sync group is created. Okay. Close it here. And here click on refresh. So now here under the sync group, we can see data sync group created. Let's click over it. This page appears data sync group okay and here we have two options databases and tables so we'll click on the databases upon clicking on databases here a new page appears to select the sync members the hub database hub database data sync hub it is already showing here now member database we have to add in Azure SQL database or add on-premises. So in this demo, we are only taking member database as Azure database. So let's click on add an Azure SQL database. Click over it. Then sync member name. Okay. So we'll name the sync member name as data sync member. The subscription, we want the same subscription. Then the server so we'll select the server the server will be member server okay because we are selecting the member database okay so it will be data sync member server which we created sql database will be data sync member so here comes the sync directions it could be bi-directional to the hub or from the hub in our case we want the data synchronization to happen bi-directional so we'll select bi-directional username password as is and then click ok so it is adding data sync member name here once that is added we could see it appearing here let's wait for some time it's added and now we can see here the data sync member name okay so we will click ok so now in the databases it is showing us count of two 
means we have one half database, Azure SQL database and one member database, which is again Azure SQL database. Okay. So we'll click OK. And our next job is to click on the tables. Once we click on tables, it will show you this page. And from here, we have to select a database. So let's open here. From the drop down, we can see hub database and the member database. The two database, which we have it here configured. Okay. The hub was showing and we added the member database. So we'll select hub database first. Now hub database is selected. We'll click on refresh schema. Once we click on refresh schema, here you can see it is loading tables. So it is loading tables here, which are present in the hub database. Okay. So here the tables present in the hub database are loaded. You can clearly see it is showing the name and the columns. dbo.comsum, dbo.persons, comsum and persons. If we go to the SQL query, we created a table comsum and we created a table persons. The comsum table was not having the primary key and the table person was having primary key. There is a condition in SQL data sync that if the table is not having primary key, it will be disabled and we cannot sync it to the member databases. Okay. So the table persons, which is having the primary key is only shown under the hub database list. So the list is showing tables without primary key are not supported. Select tables to sync. Okay. So if there are multiple tables, we will select those tables and we will try to sync it. So once you select the table, which is having the primary key, okay, it will show you the details of the table. Okay. The name of the columns, data type and description. Okay. We have selected this table and now we will click on save. So here processing is happening. The selected database schema is updating. Okay. We'll click over it. In the meantime, we will go to the member database and here we will refresh. Okay. Now you can see that there are multiple tables created. So in the process, multiple tables are created. Why these tables are created as part of internal functioning of the SQL data sync, these tables, meta tables will be created. And here also we can see that we can see that the selected database schema has been saved successfully. And in the table section also, it is showing now the count as one. Okay. If we click over it, we can see one. Now we'll close it. And here we'll click on refresh logs option. So if you click on refresh logs here itself, it will show you the logs. Okay. That we completed the sync in 1.16 seconds. Okay. So if we go back to the member database, here we can see the dbo.persons table is created, right? It is having all the columns. So let's do a select star from persons table. It will also have the data same as the data present in the hub database. Okay. So in this video, we have demonstrated SQL data sync in Azure SQL database, which is used for data synchronization. And we have demonstrated it using Azure SQL database as hub as well as member. And the data flow is bi-directional. Okay. So I hope you have got the basic idea of how we can perform SQL data sync in Azure. Thank you for watching the video. Do let me know in comments if you have any doubt or queries. Thank you. Happy learning. Bye.